Hello everyone, my name is Johan and I'm from South Africa. I've been living the last four years here in Hangzhou, China and today it's my pleasure to introduce to you the legend of silk. Silk, as gorgeous as an evening glow, is a symbol of ancient Chinese culture and a great contribution of China to the ancient world. Hangzhou is home to silk and produces the country's best silk. As the saying goes, people go to Hangzhou half for the West Lake and half for the silk. Silk played an inextricable part of Hangzhou's history. Archaeological discovery of the 4,700-year-old silk fragments from the Liangzhu site is a good proof of the long history of made-in-Hangzhou silk. In the spring and autumn period, there was a state policy to encourage farming and sericulture. Even Shi Shi, one of the four beauties in ancient China, once made a living by raising silkworms and weaving clothes by Puyang River. As she often washed them in the river, a pavilion was built to commemorate her. The silk industry came to flourish by the Tang Dynasty. In year 822, the renowned poet Pai Juyi became the governor. One day, he climbed a tower and gazed into the bustling city. Seeing the red glow this spring morning, the governor could not help but write a poem. As the red-sleeved ladies are making damask with persimmon flower patterns, the blue banners remind us it's time to taste the pure blossom wine. The first line refers to the silk, and the second revealed that persimmon flowers were a typical pattern for silk at that time. The fact that Bai Juyi put damask and the famous pear wine together indicates the city's silk fame. In the Tang Dynasty, it was also a good seller to the northwest of China and even an export to Eurasian countries along the Silk Road. The next Song Dynasty saw the peak of the production of gauze fabrics. Since the gauze type silk came mostly from Hangzhou, it is called Hangzhou gauze. You can find a jacquard machine in the painting series Farming and Weaving from the Southern Song Dynasty, in which a puller and a weaver are working together for the complex patterns. They were two excellent craftsmen in those days. The book Meng Liang Lu on City Life said that the gauze fell into categories by plane or pattern design. Yet in Liu Yong's poem Wang Hai Chao, he also described a silk dress were a popular wear among the public. In the Song Dynasty, the Grand Canal usually came to be a busy time before summer. Gauze fabrics were shipped from Hangzhou to Beijing in two months, and they would be made into light cool clothes for the noble class to survive hot days. Genshanmen used to be the site where most gauze workshops gathered when the city's silk business was in the prime. The quality of mulberry silk in Hangzhou is one of the best in China thanks to the mild soil and climate here. Silk selection, twisting and water weaving are the three features that set Hangzhou gauze apart from other sorts of silk fabrics. And the third one, water weaving, is best known. Zhang Chunqing is an advocate of the conservation of Hangzhou gauze. She said that before a cloth goes on the machine, there is a long process of preparing the warps and wefts. Like the Song people, we first place silk in water and mix it with a secret liquid. Take it out in 25 to 28 days and you would find the fabric thin, cool and comfortable. Even today, silk is still a pillar industry for Hangzhou. Du Jinsheng was noted silk factory founded in 1922. They thought it was not enough to just retain the traditional brocade weaving techniques. Instead, they started to apply new techniques to colored embroidery and landscape weaving. This is a bold step that incorporates Chinese and Western paintings in silk weaving. In 1932, Du Jinsheng invented the Westlake silk umbrella. His inspiration came from the richly adorned umbrella someone else made before. The silk umbrella with patterns of the Westlake looks decent and polished, and is light and good for use. In May 2005, Du Jinsheng brocade was named an intangible cultural heritage of Zhejiang province. On September 30th, 2009, Sericulture and silk craftsmanship of China was inscribed on the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. As a critical part of sericulture and silk craftsmanship of China, the Hangzhou gauze weaving techniques was officially declared a UNESCO intangible cultural heritage, which was a landmark event for the city's silk business and culture. Hangzhou silk deserves a reputation no less than the Westlake. It has a place in the city's top four local specialities together with the tea of Shi Hu Longjing, Fan Wang Xingji, and scissors of Zhang Xiaochuan. Smooth as water, soft as smoke, and graceful as a cloud. This is how silk looks like in the people's eyes. It's a refined, stylish, and heavenly gift to everyone. The city has a culture, and the culture stands for the city. Silk now visibly represents the city's culture and speaks for its unique history and future. 
We can also find the brilliant culture of Hangzhou from the finest silkworks, like the riverside scene at Qingming Festival, the ladies with the headpin flowers, a boundless view, the source of silk, etc. Silk-based culture and economy will forever be a part of Hangzhou, and silk itself more than a sort of consumer goods. Instead, it's been deeply rooted in people's lives and aesthetic progress. It's been an icon timeless to the city. Hangzhou, Huang Ingni.